Today I'm going to show you a very cool feature on your Fujifilm camera that I'll bet a lot of you are not aware of. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Most of us at some point will use either Lightroom, Capture One, Adobe Camera Raw, Iridian Transformer, or some other third-party program to convert and edit our Fujifilm RAW files. But did you know that, surprisingly, there are a large number of editing tasks that you can do right inside your Fujifilm camera. So to access all of them, you need to be in the playback mode. That's real simple. Press the playback button right here. While you're in the playback mode, go ahead and press the menu OK button and you'll see this menu right here. You want to choose raw conversion and this will take you into a menu with all kinds of options. You see that? Now I'm not going to go into detail on every single one of these because I want to give you an overview and some tips, but let me just give you the highlights. If you choose reflect shooting conditions, what that means is that the camera will go ahead and process the conversion into a JPEG or a TIFF file and it will use Use all of the exact same settings that you had when you first shot the image. If you go into file type, here you can specify either a JPEG or a TIFF file. And TIFF file gives you two options, 8 or 16 bit. You can go into image size and change the size of the image. The only thing is that if you shot an existing 3 by 2 say, and you go and you change it to a 1 by 1 square, you don't have any control over where you can crop it. The camera will automatically do it for you. You can choose image quality, fine or normal. Obviously, you're going to want to choose fine. And this is interesting. Push-pull processing, you can modify this for your raw file. So it's great because you can go back and modify the exposure compensation right here and then generate out another JPEG file. Now, keep in mind that I am showing you these options and demoing this on an X-T4 camera. If you have a different Fujifilm camera, you may not see all of these specific options here. So here you can choose dynamic range and you can actually go back to the raw file and modify the dynamic range and generate a new JPEG or TIFF file from that. Now some of these may be grayed out. For example, D range priority in this case is grayed out. And that has to do with the fact that the original raw file that we're looking at right now and trying to edit wasn't shot with the high enough ISO value for that D range priority option to be considered. If you want to know more about dynamic range, D-range priority, and HDR, please see my three videos on those topics. I will have links to those videos in the description down below of this video. And here's a great one. You can change the film simulation. So if we wanted to change it to say Acros, boom. Although I would like Fujifilm for a future firmware update to give us a preview of what the film simulation looks like right here. You see, that'd be nice if you could just see what it looks like in this little thumbnail as you're going through. That would be cool. And many of these items are located in your image quality section of your Fujifilm menu. We can add some grain, put on a little bit of color chrome, even change the white balance and adjust the tone curve. You can make a basic S curve here. And here's one I really want to explore in a future video, high ISO noise reduction. So you could go back to an image you shot a long time ago and actually apply high ISO noise reduction based on Fujifilm's implementation of that. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to edit an older raw file that you shot years ago, but in the meantime, keep in mind that you could go back to a photo that you took previously and run it through again Fujifilm's implementation of high ISO noise reduction. Clarity, lens modulation, all these items are here for you to edit. And you can even change the color space to either sRGB or Adobe RGB. So when you're done making all of your tweaks and settings here, the only thing left you need to do is press the Q button. Once you do that, you're going to get a preview of what the final resulting JPEG or TIFF file will look like. At this point, you could go back and make further adjustments if you don't like what you see, and you can press the menu OK button to save it, and it will save it right onto the SD card with your other images. So here was the original photo I took just earlier, and here's the resulting JPEG that I just converted. You could then, of course, take the JPEG file or the TIFF file right off your SD card and into your computer for further processing. Now, about this feature, 
here, there's a few things I wanna tell you. First off, it only works with raw files. If you shot JPEG, it will not work. So you must be shooting in raw. It will also work though, if you are shooting in both JPEG and raw. So as long as you originally shot a raw file at the time you took the photo, then you're good to go to use this raw conversion editing feature. So now the question on my mind, and I'm sure yours as well, what about a raw file that you shot a long time ago? Could you go back in time, grab that raw file, put it on the camera, and run it through this editing process and see if you can make it better? Well, it turns out that you can, sort of. there's three things you need to know. The first is that it will not work if you are using a blank SD card. So for example, if you format an SD card in your camera and then you put the SD card in your computer and you drag an original RAW file that you shot a long time ago onto that SD card, take the SD card out of your computer, put it back in the camera and try and browse it, it will not work. It'll say no image, it can't find it. So that leads me to number two which is what you need to do to get around this a little secret trick is simply take a photo. So just format the card and then just take one photo, one test photo. It doesn't matter what it is of, as long as it's a photo, then take the card out of the camera, put it in your computer. And now that you have at least one photo on there, drag the other raw files that you want to convert over into that SD card with that other photo. So they're all together there. Take it out of the computer, put it back in the camera and you you will be able to now browse and see and edit all of those raw files. However, and this is number three, it will only work with raw files that were shot on the same camera model. For example, I shot this photo on an X-T2, I shot this photo on an X-T2, I shot this photo on an X-T3, and I shot this photo on an X-T4. However, the X-T2 and the X-T3 will not work. Look at that, it's grayed out. Do you see how the conversion option in the menu is grayed out? You cannot convert a raw file shot on a different model camera. It must be shot on the same model. And what I'm still a little unclear on is, does that mean it's the same model camera and it'll work with any RAW file on any X-T4 or only on the very specific X-T4 you use to take the shot? Well, I don't have two X-T4s unfortunately to test, but I can tell you that it will work if you shot the photo on the exact same camera model in the past that you're now trying to run it through the raw converter and editor on. By the way, there's one more thing I wanna show you. Have a look at this weird looking package icon. Do you see that there? Look at that. It's on this picture here, but it's not on this picture here. What that means is a gift. This is the strangest icon I've ever seen in camera or tech history to explain what it's supposed to do, okay? So basically, anytime you see a gift on an image that you're playing back, what that means is that you are looking at an image that's on this SD card that was not shot by this camera. It was taken from another camera. These two photos right here, I shot on an X-T2. This photo right here, without the gift, I shot on this very X-T4 camera. That's what that little gift icon means. As I said before, this is a topic I definitely wanna dig into more, especially the dynamic range and high ISO noise reduction parts of this conversion. I would love to compare it to what Lightroom does and so forth, because being able to go back to photos that you took you know, a year or two ago, put them back in the camera after the camera camera has gone through, say, a few firmware updates and has gotten better would be very interesting to see how you can, if possible, improve on those raw files. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Check this feature out. It is really cool. I was surprised at how much editing you can do. And the fact that you can generate out a TIFF file is very, very cool. Anyhow, I'll see you in another video again real soon. Take care.